The Cessna 206 Station Air, described by Textron as a sport utility vehicle of the air, with its combination of powerful engine, rugged construction, and a large cabin, has made these aircraft a popular choice of both commercial and private operators around the world. Easily configured on floats, wheels, amphibs, and even skis, this aircraft is ready for any environment in any location. Originally manufactured from 1964 until 1986, until Cessna halted production of its single-engine production line, it was reintroduced as the H series in 1998 and remains in production today. Although robust in design, there have been several fatalities on Canadian waters while operating on floats. In 1989, one person drowned in the rear of the aircraft when it came inverted during landing. 1996, a pilot and three passengers drowned in the rear of the aircraft when it was capsized during takeoff. 1997, two people were unable to exit the aircraft and drowned when it capsized on landing. 2003, one person drowned in the rear of the aircraft when it flipped during landing. And most recently, in August of 2018, a Cessna 206 flipped on landing resulting in three people drowning in the rear of the aircraft. Garrett Vermeer, the Transport Safety Board lead investigator of this most recent accident, started his professional aviation career by joining the Mission Aviation Fellowship, where he served as a line pilot, chief pilot, and operations manager, making him very familiar with the Cessna single-engine aircraft, especially the 206. The final TSB report revealed that Transport Canada had concerned for several years with the double cargo door as an emergency exit, especially with the flaps down, being the rear cargo door was not readily accessible and opening it was not simple and obvious, especially when inverted and submerged. In 1998, shortly after resuming production of the H model, Cessna submitted an application for a Canadian type certificate under the new Transport Canada rules. All previous models had been accepted on the basis of the FAA type certificate, However, under these new Transport Canada rules, the H model was evaluated against the latest building standards, and it was determined that the rear double cargo door could not be considered an emergency exit because it was not readily accessible and the opening was not simple and obvious. With this, Transport Canada certified the H model aircraft with a limit of five occupants, provided that one of the center row seats was removed to provide an exit path to the front exit for the occupants in the rear seats. The TSB report from the 2018 accident states, as shown in the occurrence, without functional exits, the time required to exit the aircraft may increase, which in turn increases the risk of death in time critical situations, such as when the aircraft is submerged or when there is a post impact fire. It also states the risk resulting from delayed egress of the aircraft remains high and more defenses are needed to mitigate the hazard. To mitigate this hazard, Transport Canada issued a Canadian Airworthiness Directive CF 2020-10 on April 23, 2020 to impose the same occupant limitations on all models of the Cessna 206 with an additional paragraph stating, Transport Canada welcomes additional solutions that may be proposed in the future to mitigate risk from the hazard that is a target of this airworthiness directive. Transport Canada will approve an alternate means of compliance when those solutions are adequately substantiated. We've added several ideas to develop a solution for the double cargo door egress issue, especially with the flaps lowered and blocking the forward door from opening. Taking the latest build standards into consideration, our mandate was emergency exits must be located to allow escape in any probable crash attitude. Airplanes with a seating capacity of two or more must have at least one emergency exit on the opposite side of the cabin from the main door. It must provide a clear and unobstructed opening large enough to admit a 19 by 26 ellipse. Be readily accessible, requiring no exceptional agility to be used in emergencies. Have a method of opening that is simple and obvious. Be arranged and marked for easy location and operation, even in darkness. 
and the proper functioning of the emergency exit must be shown by tests. One idea was having the rear cargo door open without the need of opening the forward cargo door. The main concern with this concept was if the door inadvertently opened in flight, it would open into the airflow, ultimately ripping the door off and having it embed into the tail. Obviously not an ideal flight configuration. Another was to redesign the rear door handle. However, this would not satisfy the simple and obvious method of operation, being there would still be two handles to operate. And secondly, if the aircraft was configured with only four seats, then any baggage or cargo in the cargo area would obstruct the size of the exit opening, ultimately diminishing the exit on the opposite side of the aircraft. This egress path would further be compromised if the aircraft were inverted underwater where the load would shift down onto the cargo restraints. Also, in this time of panic, it would be hard to think to go down under the cargo for your escape path. Another idea was to jettison the forward cargo door hinge pins. This would solve the second exit requirement with cargo, however it poses some of the same concerns as modifying the rear door. If the door inadvertently opened in flight, it would open into the airflow again, ultimately ripping the door off and having it embed into the tail. This option would also require an additional release mechanism for the pins and again would not satisfy the simple and obvious method of operation being there would still be two handles to operate in an emergency. It was even debated to alter the flaps by shortening them equally on both wings to allow the forward door to open with the flaps lowered. This solution would have required extensive flight testing and ultimately it could have altered the flight characteristics enough to remove it from existing critical flight profiles required by some of today's operators. The final concept was hinging the forward cargo door window. This option appeared to have potential of meeting all of our mandated requirements. It would allow escape in any probable crash attitude. It would provide a centrally located emergency exit opposite the entry door. It would provide a clear and unobstructed opening and it would be simple and obvious to operate by turning just one factory handle. The initial prototype was tested March 25th, 2020 with not necessarily the greatest results at full flap. However, with some redesigning and the introduction of a unique double reverse hinge and mechanical lock, success. The newly designed prototype went through rigorous testing as part of the certification process. Flight tests were carried out in a multitude of configurations, including steep turns, high speed maneuvers, and V&E. The results? No sign of vibration, no wind noise, and most importantly, no change to flight characteristics. Extensive egress testing was performed with full flap. The final tests were witnessed by several Transport Canada certification engineers and revealed that naive passengers easily exited from the rear seat through the forward cargo door in exceptional time. The final test had five passengers and crew exit through the cargo door with full flap, resulting in a 41 second evacuation. Transport Canada commented to the ease of which the door opened with full flap and that the flap had no impact on the passengers during the evacuation tests. Photoluminescent placards were designed and installed to aid the passengers in operating either one or both doors in the dark, taking in consideration that the aircraft may be in an inverted position. A photoluminescent placard and rubber guard are also installed on the right hand flap inboard rib for extra safety. In August of 2020, Airworthiness Resources Corporation received the Transport Canada Supplemental Type Certificate for the installation of the forward cargo door split window modification. The STC allows all H models of the Cessna 206 operating in Canada to return to using an approved six seat configuration. Only a few days later, an alternate means of compliance was issued from Transport Canada against Airworthiness Directive CF 2020 10, allowing all models of Cessna 206 aircraft operating in Canada to return to their approved six seat configuration with our kit installed. 
EASA, and FAASTCs have now been secured for the kit, and we are pleased to offer an approved worldwide solution to your Cessna 206. Our kit provides you now with a centrally located exit path in any probable crash attitude. There's no change to normal operating instructions. They're simple and obvious. One handle equals one exit. Tested and proven effective. And most importantly, it provides you with a peace of mind of having a safer 206.